Hey guys, I uh, thought I'd show you how to do carbon arc gouging, otherwise known as arc air, air arc, carbon gouging. Uh, designation in the welding world is CAW, it's carbon arc welding, or sorry, CAG, carbon arc gouging. There is carbon arc welding. Um, that's uh, used to be called also um, hydrogen welding, I think it was called. Or something like that. Atomic hydrogen welding. <laughs> it had a fancy name. All it was was two carbon rods that came together and made a little gap, and you could adjust the gap, and uh, you could basically weld. You know, it worked kind of like oxyacetylene welding or you know, like a TIG welding almost, just because it created heat and you could add a rod to it. Uh, it's long past as a technology. It's long, long done. Well, it didn't work that great, I guess, but because you had to keep adjusting the rods, the carbon rods. But anyway. So if you're going to carbon arc gouge, you need uh, three different things. What you need is uh, a big power source. So you got to have like, geez, minimum 300 amps or so to run the smallest rods, like 3 16 rods. I don't even know if you can get them smaller than that, but anyway. So what I picked up was uh, uh, Miller... Uh, 425 amp single phase ACDC arc welder. Now you can carbon arc gouge with AC or DC, um, but the ideal thing to have is DC reverse polarity. Um, basically, this is a, a ACDC dual polarity type, old old type transformer type welder. Uh, it's a big beast, about 700 pounds. Um, you can get lucky and pick these up for pretty much nothing. Uh, I don't say pretty much nothing, a couple hundred bucks or something. Uh, you see them a lot of times at old auctions and things. People just don't want a big machine this big. Uh, you can get a lot of lot lighter machines nowadays that do just as much work, uh, except in the gouging department. You want something tough like this. You could work this thing full out all day long, and you likely will never ever hurt it. This is back when they built shit to last. So, big old Miller. It's got a big crank here for turning up your heat and a little dial over here. So, with this machine, uh, you switch it to high. Uh, and then I read it here DC high voltage or high amps. So, I'm just going to crank it up. It's kind of sticky. I got to open it up someday and loosen her up. So, let's. All right, Whew, there's a bit of work cranking that thing. It's kind of sticky, but uh, Gordon, this is reading 375, but the last time I uh, worked this thing, it seemed like the gauge wasn't working quite right because the, the crank's going as far as it can go, but the gauge can go more. And just judging from what I was uh, feeling there was pretty much the full amp, so there's something that's not quite connecting between the gauge and the actual machine. But it's basically a 400, uh, actually it says 300, but the full, um, in, according to the book, the full output is uh, 425 amps. Probably a momentary thing, until it warms up a bit. Anyway, let's move on. You just need a lot of power, DC, reverse polarity, and you need a gun, uh, a torch, an arc air torch. And... Here's one here. This is a slightly different one than the normal Arc Air one because this one is made for foundries. And I got it for peanuts because of somebody ordered it or something and it wasn't really the right one they wanted. But it turned out to be a real high amperage one, so it's, it's a bit beefier than the normal one, which is great. I'm happy with that. And I've noticed it pretty well works exactly like the other one. I think the difference is that it's uh, even heavier duty at the front here. So as it gets beat around in the foundry, it can handle more abuse. Um, these arc air rigs tend to be very heavy duty. Take a real abusive person to wreck it. And uh, what you get is these carbon rods. Uh, these are, I think they're quarter inch carbon rods. Uh, it's pretty well all carbon. Looks copper there, but it's just a thin copper skin, and all, really all that copper does is helps to get the contact started between the 
you know where the brass and copper connect to the uh, to the rod here to get the juice flowing through the carbon and um, the other benefit of the carbon is, or the copper is it keeps the carbon from breaking because it's a uh, fairly fragile it's just a big lump of carbon or graphite or something like that it almost feels like graphite but graphite is carbon anyway you put that in there you don't want it too far away from the jet there's these little air jets in here you have to have that's the third thing you need you need to have a good air source um, I have a decent uh, big compressor runs about 19 CFM which is perfect you don't need a whole lot more than that um, around the you know approaching the 20 CFM mark is perfect and basically that's it you just hook it up like a like the regular leads you just have a uh, you know ground and and this here just like a welder stick welder you have a little valve right here so as soon as you get ready to gouge you push this valve and that opens up the air so it just oh, it's just an air valve is all it is and then you gouge at an angle about I don't know higher than 45 I find but it just depends on what you're doing it'll work in lots of different angles uh, sometimes you just have to change it depends on what you're after and what you're trying to do and uh, it doesn't take long to figure it out it's actually a fairly simple thing to learn how to do uh, basically just get in there and just start gouging and you'll you'll get a feel for it real quick it's nothing to teach somebody how to do this in 20 minutes or something like that uh, super beneficial if you're doing heavy work if you're doing a lot of buckets and shipbuilding any big plate shop whatever would have stuff like this if you're in a sh big machine shop and you take in big jobs and you got to gouge shit out and things like that this is much better than a torch in a lot of ways because it uh, it doesn't have to go through the object to actually remove material you can gouge with a torch too but uh, anybody that's done any torch gouging knows how miserable a job that is so anyway I'm gonna set that up here now and uh, then we'll we'll start some gouging okay got all the air set up uh, I'm in an ideal location here to uh, do a little gouging nothing's gonna blow back at me just because of it being set up on the table here uh, just a big lump of steel it's about two inches thick four inches wide pretty good lump and uh, just a ground and your gouger and I'm just gonna blow it off out there so you know this is an ideal setup if you're gonna do that you know your safety gear could be minimized such as what I'm not necessarily wearing a lot of leather or anything but if you're gouging somewhere like in a bucket or anything like that the metal gets blown pretty good distances and it's pretty big lumps of molten steel so uh, you know you need to wear a lot of gear if you're in that sort of situation you got to wear pretty well leather from head to toe uh, helmet with the shield neck shield um, you know glasses leather gloves everything uh, like I say I'm in an ideal situation here where I'm just blowing it off to the side so you know I don't need the, all the gear but um, you know when you're doing it in a ship you're between a bulkhead or something it blows shoots it right back at you so it's pretty bad um, it's really loud you need to wear ear protection even for this demo I'll put earplugs in because it's uh, it's really loud uh, the air and the arc itself is incredibly loud it's one of the loudest things you can do in metalworking so let's uh, let's do a little gadget and I'll just uh, I'll just go ahead and start and we'll talk about it from there Okay, so there you go. That's a that's a gouge, about four or five inches long and about a half an inch deep, just that quick. Comes out very clean. It's very smooth. Doesn't take a lot of work now to use that for welding. Uh, maybe chip a little slag at the back there, and then just run a wire wheel through it or a grinder, 
just to get the uh, little skin of oxide off it you're ready to weld um, it's a fabulous tool it's very fast it's very cheap those rods they don't add they don't cost a whole lot for a big box of them you can get quite a bit of work out of uh, a couple rods um, it eats them up fairly fast but I would say one rod could do about two or three feet of, of gouge uh, that's just off the top of my head. Might be a little more, but uh, depends on how deep you're trying to go and that sort of thing. So as you can see, it's it's quite the groove. It's very smooth. Um, give you an idea. There's my hand. It's a it's quite a big gouge, and that's what you can do with 425 amps of power, baby, right there. So like I say, it ain't ain't rocket science, but uh, I'm going to show you real quick how big a gouge I can create with that right now until the rod gets used up and I'll just I'll stop it there but I'll show you how much metal I can remove very quickly So there you have it. It hasn't been cleaned yet, but uh, all that slag will knock right out. It's just it's just stuck to the other side there a little bit. Doesn't take nothing to clean it. Uh, got a little rough at the end there because the rod got too short. But basically, you can do a smooth cut all the way until you get down to a rod stub that might be about two inches long. So I've removed the equivalent of about a three-quarter round square bar, or sorry, <laughs> three-quarter round, a three-quarter round bar. About that much material has been removed out of this so it's bigger than my thumb and uh, about three quarters of an inch deep anyway that's all there is to it like I say it ain't rocket surgery anybody can do it it's a good thing to have and you can do a lot of work with it and I recommend every heavy shop has one we'll talk to you later